Hello, and welcome to the Grafano, Loki, and Min.io tutorial and demo. At the end of this module, you would be able to use Min.io to store Loki data and analyze it using Grafana. We're going to show you how to set up a Grafana Loki environment. There's a link here to a video getting started with Grafana Loki in under four minutes that was produced by Grafana and it's really good. And then we'll also show you how to download and run Loki in Docker containers. We've prepared Docker containers with some scripts as well as Loki, Promtail, Grafana, and Min.io for you. First, we'll set up our storage configuration. We'll look at Loki, look at the Loki.yaml file. And what's important is to look into the storage config section. And in this storage config section, you will see instructions to use the shared store S3 as well as an S3 address, which is min.io, the Loki bucket. And also now note, this is really important. If you take a look at the dot in the min.io address, that's because there's no need to specify an AWS region. And Loki.yaml is expecting an AWS region. So you need to just put a dot there. We'll have a Docker environment. If we dig into docker compose.yaml, we'll see how containers, volumes, ports, and networks are used to build our little Loki and MinIO environment. So in order for the Loki image to run as a container with access to Loki configurations, we need to set up and use docker volumes. You can see this below. We're using the Loki slash production volume, and that's where we'll have saved Loki.yaml. So we'll go on further and we'll make sure that we've got a, a network set up for us to use when we're running Loki and MinIO. Let's take a look at the network section of the Docker Compose.yaml, where we've defined the network and exposed the ports of the container that's running MinIO. So this is port 9000 for the API and port 9001 to access the console via a web browser. We're going to configure our network to share all containers and we're going to use this Loki network. Now we need to open some ports and we also need a few dynamically assigned IP addresses to go with some named resources that are Loki and MinIO. So you'll need the port 3100 open for Loki, and you'll also need port 3000 open for Grafana. The next thing that happens when we run our docker compose.yaml is that we launch a script that involves the Minio client in a container, and we use the Minio client to configure Minio server and create a destination bucket for our Loki data and also to set the access policy to public so that we don't have any conflict trying to access the data or write it to that bucket. Promtail is a small Go program that will run as an agent and it will tail local system logs into Loki. I've already configured Promtail to do what we need it to do, but you may want to look at the scrape underscore config section because this is where we tell Promtail which logs to pull, how to format them, and where to send them. Chances are that there are some subtle differences in your environment, and you're going to want to customize how Promtail scraping takes place. And here are some links for you so you can read about how to do that. All right, now digging deeper into the scrape config, we can see that we have a job name. This is not so important in our demo, but it would be important when we have dozens or hundreds of logs because this name is what we use to keep track of the logs that are collected. We have a target and that target is the Prometheus service, 
We're also going to go ahead and apply labels. Labels go with every log line that are scraped within this job. And what they do is they're just information that you can use to keep track of what the scrape job was. So you can give labels uh, human readable names and then use them to find information in logs. And path is pretty simple. Path just tells you where to pull the log. All right, so now it's time to hit it. We've already discussed Docker Compose, Loki Config, and Promptail Local Config. So now what you need to do is clone the listed repository and then change directory into the local production folder that's under that repository. And then you're going to edit the docker compose.yaml to reference your local home directory. And if necessary, you'll edit the scrape configuration in promptail.yaml. Now we just go to a command prompt after we have cloned our repositories and we do a docker compose up. We let things download and run for a couple of minutes. And as soon as it looks like everything's ready, we can log into the MinIO console using the default credentials. Um, remember, if this were in the real world, we wouldn't use the default credentials. We would change them immediately. And we can see that the script ran to create the bucket, right? Here's our Loki bucket. And then what you can do is dive into the bucket. So click to open it. And you'll see underneath the Loki bucket, there is a fake path called fake. And this is where we're going to save our Loki data. You can open the fake directory. Now, it's important to understand that if you recall from our Loki configuration file, we had a setting there that said to hold data in memory for five minutes before writing it. So you may have to wait several minutes for data to start appearing in this bucket, and that's normal. That, that's the way the system works. If you're impatient, you could go into the Loki config and you could lower the five minutes to one minute. So now what's happening? Promptail is sending logs to Loki and Loki is saving data in MinIO. So now let's fire up Grafana, log into Grafana using the default credentials, and now what we're going to do in Grafana is add Loki, right? So we have Loki is working at Promptail, sending logs to Loki. Loki is sending the logs to MinIO, but now we want to add them to Grafana so we can visualize them. So click add data source to add the data source and then select Loki. You're going to edit the HTTP URL field uh, to represent our Loki server. And if you recall, this is set up in the Docker Compose. So you're going to set it to Loki and use port 3100. And now you can view Loki logs. Just click the Explore button, select the Loki data source, of which we only have one, and then choose the log stream, of which we only have one. Uh, you can also take this a step further and instead of just viewing the logs, you can write a log QL query and run the query, or you could use the GUI to select the log and query parameters. This is useful for troubleshooting, right? You might be looking for something specific or you know something took place at a certain time and you want to drill down into the log records from that time. Uh, another thing you could do is you could just look at the logs that are in Loki and browse them. Select the labels that you want to browse and drill down. Click the show logs button, select a time range, and you're on your way to working with Loki. Here's this screen. You've got the var logs job, right? That's my job that I'm running. You could run other jobs. You simply click the show logs button and you'll see the log or add query and you can actually write a query, they can get pretty detailed, however detailed they need to get. Here you could see what happens when we drill down into the log just by viewing it. 
there's right there's no query here this is everything that was in the log and then if we wanted to view details we scroll down and actually just click on one log entry and it will open up and you'll see additional details about that entry like the time full messaging before and after the log entry so you can do your analysis we're about to start wrapping up we've given you a good little demo of loki and grafana and min.io this is a starting place this is where you get everything together and kick the tires and find out how it works and explore and then you go and edit all the configurations and install new instances so you can run this in production the next step would be to stop running docker containers and start running these containers under kubernetes and use distributed min.io instead of running a single min.io instance in a single container and that way you'll be able to scale up make full use of loki to simplify troubleshooting and make it easier to find recurrent errors. And the first thing that you may want to do on your Loki journey is install Promtail on other machines and start logging them too. You would edit the Promtail local config.yaml in order to update the configuration to include these other machines. And then you can start to get an idea of how Loki can provide a total view into your logs throughout your environment. So what did we cover today? We covered that distributed systems, especially when containerized and orchestrated by Kubernetes, perhaps across multiple clouds even, have many, many, many logs for their applications and associated microservices. You can't run these things if you have no insight into what they're doing. So the observability stack of Grafana, Prometheus, and Alert Manager is very popular and recently gained the addition of Loki. If you enjoy this tutorial, come back for the other one on Grafana, Prometheus, and Alert Manager. We'll show you how to collect metrics and fire alerts when something fails. And now remember that Loki combined with MinIO is a cost-effective way to collect, store, query, and analyze logs. And right before I sign off, I'll just remind you to join the MinIO Slack channel or shoot us an email at hello at min.io if you have additional questions.